So I'm here in the garden and I thought I would, uh, well, give a tour of the garden, what I've got here. It's not the nicest, neatest, in rows type of a garden. It's kind of just a hodgepodge of plants just thrown in wherever I felt like throwing something. So just south of my garden, I have a stand of trees that blocks out a lot of the sunlight during the day. So I deal with uh, low light conditions and uh, cooler climate. So it's a challenge, but I make it work. So that's some rosemary that I was given this year, and some tomatoes that I repotted in my little tomato garden. I'll just go down these one at a time. Uh, let's see, there's a uh, asparagus fern. When asparagus grows up, it becomes ferns. And we've got some uh, probably more asparagus ferns, and then we've got some, um, I, I'm thinking that's some sort of cabbage, kale, or uh, possibly broccoli. Yeah, very large leaves. Yeah, some little tiny kales. There's some Tuscanino kale. And off to the left there in that little plant, the brighter green one, is a uh, uh, Swiss chard. Another Tuscanino kale. It looks like uh, one of my cabbages is getting eaten up by some uh, slugs or earwigs. Oh, got a weed. Some cabbages or something going off to seed there I need to pull out sooner or later. Most likely later when I need the space. There's uh, another broccoli. And some more cabbages. This is my favorite cabbage right there. It just It's so pretty right now. I took a picture of it for my main picture. Oh, there's the girls. The girls are great. And here we are with more Tuscanino kale. Some old beets, uh, Tuscanino kale, and there's a few brighter colored pieces in there, which are the Swiss chard, another tomato garden. For a guy who didn't buy a single tomato seed this year, I sure have a lot of tomato plants. Didn't buy any plants or anything, I just ended up with a bunch of them. Potatoes! Gotta love your potatoes. Uh, some roses. This one here, these were just sticks I stuck in the ground basically uh, two years ago. And that rose bush is really doing well. I'm hoping it blooms. It's got buds, but that doesn't mean it'll bloom. Hey, does anyone know what this is? Yes, that is stinging nettles. It's one of my favorite vegetables, actually. If you steam them, they will take away the sting, and they're delicious. Yeah, yum, yum. Flowers. Here we have more potatoes. It's like... What can I put back here that slugs can eat and I don't have to worry about messing up anything? So I just stuck those back there and... Uh, here's a mess for me. I need to clean these strawberries up and some buckets of junk here from last year. I just haven't messed with it. Uh, here's a couple fun ones. I got some uh, Jerusalem artichoke starts from uh, or roots bulbs, whatever, tubers from uh, John Kohler of GrowingYourGreens.com and planted those. And more potatoes and tomatoes and oh, what's that little one there in the center? Aha! That's a nasturtium. A young one. Probably needs to be watered. And that's a lemon balm. And that's some beets. And that's some weed. I might just leave that weed or whatever it is. It's got some pretty purple flowers on it and see what it turns into. And then I've got my compost pile. Lots of compost. Um, got a lot of grass over there for uh, for not having a yard. For not having a lawn. Um, my browns. A pile of browns and greens and then uh, 
little trash can that's half buried, there's actually a worm bin. I should probably get a shovel or something and show you the interior of these things. Yeah, I think I will. Okay, so here we are at the compost pile. This is almost finished compost. I grow in it anyway, even though it's not completely finished. It's what my uh, tomatoes are in presently. They seem to love it. So do potatoes. This is a second stage, and underneath all this hay here on top, there's going to be some really black roadie dirt stuff in it. It needs to be turned a couple more times and it'll be in good shape to use. And then my first stage over here, um, I try to layer it browns and blacks and browns and blacks, or browns and greens, browns and greens, whatever it is. And it stays pretty hot. It's, uh, I'd say it's 200 plus degrees. You see the steam coming off of it. It, uh, it stays really, really warm in that pile, and that pile will turn in, well, it'll keep getting turned until it ends up in the black pile spot, and it'll be black by then. I've been making my own dirt for about three years now, and it's worked very well. I have people from all over the neighborhood bring me their grass clippings. Here is my little nursery of orphans. A friend of ours was moving and gave me some peas, squash, sunflowers, etc. And so I've got those I need to figure out what to do with. There's some onions going to seed. Oh, nasturtiums. Gotta love nasturtiums. They're delicious. They also have a very pretty flower when they flower. A couple of volunteer nasturtiums there down in between. Here we have sunchokes, Jerusalem artichokes. Jerusalem artichokes are actually a misnomer, but they're actually from the Americas, not from Jerusalem, and they're not an artichoke. They're a sunflower root, but they're supposed to be really good. Some carrots, and some parsley. A couple little volunteer parsleys there. I'll just leave them, let them grow. My irrigation's going right there. You can see it bubbling up. And looks like some carrots and some parsley and something else over there. Purple cabbage. Oh, some pretty flowers. Um, these flowers here, this is a sage gone to flower. Very sweet and savory flowers. I really like eating flowers. There's some more lemon balm. Lots of lemon balm, some chocolate mint, and some spearmint. Uh, it might be peppermint. It's hard to say. An empty bucket with a couple volunteer, probably kohlrabi in it. Kohlrabi was leaning over that bucket last year when it was uh, when it was going to seed. <laughs> so it's probably got kohlrabi in it. Some cabbages in another tomato garden with a whole bunch of onions that have been there for a couple years and they're going off to seed. So maybe I'll have Walla Walla sweet seeds here soon. My bolting plants that are out in the summery area and don't like it there. More potatoes. And here's another sunchoke, and in that same container there's uh, crimson runner beans and this other stuff. Oh, there's another potato. All different kinds of potatoes, heirlooms, and I also have russets. I think that's, I think the one we just passed there was russets. And squash. You see my irrigation tube going through, but I've yet to get pips on it. I need to buy some pips and put them on there so that it'll be watering this garden. This garden's brand new this year and has just been ravaged by earwigs, I think. I'm going to have to do something about it. I don't know yet what. Having all those blocks there empty like it is is just uh, asking for slugs and snails and earwigs. I should fill them all up and put something in them. Hey, look, flowers right on. I think they were both male flowers. I was looking to see if there was a female flower there or not. Typically squash seem to start with male flowers first. And now we're in the glass building. I've got a glass building and we call it the lanai. It's got a deck, but at one end it has a at one end it has a um, garden. And this rack is put up right over the top of it. Hey, there's a geranium. And you see a couple tomato plants there. And right there in the black pot, that is a grapefruit tree. It's about three years old now. I planted from seed on accident. 
I found a seed sprouting inside of a grapefruit, so I put it in. Some peppers, more tomatoes. Those peppers and tomatoes are for sale, by the way. And my salmonberry bushes, which I've also got on the other side of the yard. I mean, I've got salmonberries everywhere. I really like salmonberries. Um, so I've been propagating them for about three years. Oh, there's one right there. Give you a good look at salmon berries. They are tasty. Get to eat those for another about week or two, maybe three weeks. And the last part of my garden here. Last bed. I built this one, I think, last year, at the beginning of last year. Um, and then I planted these guys here all from last year, last spring. Um, uh, right here. These are all from last spring. This particular broccoli is from last year we cut the broccoli and then it grew two new heads and you can see where this one here grew off this one's actually over a year old and is growing another head of broccoli and has two more off to the side of it that are off to seed um, I just find that really really amazing that I'm getting that good of a head of broccoli on a second year I might just keep that plant around and see how long it'll last those are more Tuscanino kales, and these here are some... I think these ones here I planted last year. Late last year. And more Tuscanino kales, I just... Oh, this thing's annoying. More Tuscanino kales, and some marigolds, and some garlic. I had a couple pumpkin plants right in this area, but earwigs took them out, so... I just haven't had as much time this year to deal with uh, the plants as I'd like to, but I've got enough. I'm not worried about it. Plant twice as much as you need and let the bugs have half of it. You're pretty well set. Now there's a nice healthy uh, crimson runner bean. I need to get it tied up though because it's just asking to be eaten up by earwigs. They'll eat the leaves and everything. Once the plant's high enough about a foot and a half off the ground, if I get it up on the line, it's not so bad. This is salal, and here's some salal berries. Salal berries are edible when they're purple, and uh, they grow all over, shoot, probably all over the west coast. I wouldn't be surprised, but definitely here in the northwest, salal grows everywhere. And uh, the berries are extremely sugary, but uh, very edible. I eat salal berries, a few of them every year. So that's the garden tour. Uh, I've got a lot of plants and uh, I enjoy dealing with plants and weeds and obviously or maybe I'm just, I don't know. I've, I've got a lot of plants and stuff. I just keep planting and if I plant a few seeds every day I end up with more plants than I know what to do with. So uh, that's my garden. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I hope you find a way to grow someplace. Have a nice day.